Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Staying Sweet, the podcast. 2023 has certainly been an interesting year for this podcast and for me as a podcaster. From recording my episodes anywhere I could in random bathrooms, bedrooms, even a River Island changing room, there has literally been no place I haven't tried to record a podcast episode, even a car in the middle of summer. And That just tells you and shows you if you want to make something work and happen, you've got to make do with your circumstances. And this year, 2023, has certainly been one that I've enjoyed taking the leap and believing in this podcast, deciding to find a podcast studio the one I'm in right now, and recording not just better quality audio, but also introduce video into my podcasting production and marketing plan. I have seen my podcast really soar, grow, change and evolve. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing all my favourite best bits, highlights and moments from series three with all my incredible guests from industry experts, business owners, brand owners, founders, there is something for all of you to enjoy. And I really hope that in having series three as part of a video podcast, that it's enabled you to connect closer to those lovely people out there that exist in the women in business industry. And I really just love how this podcast has evolved this year. Even in incorporating a studio, I've been able to access and find and work with some incredible Incredible women in business and I can't wait to see what 2024 brings but of course there are lots of guest episodes to enjoy today so please take a minute take some tips write them down and network with these amazing female founders and women in business. George Mack, George was talking about what the difference is between high and low agency so like high agency is the ability to enact change so like a high agency friendship has like the mindset of oh my god that's a great idea right why don't we do this or why don't we reach out to this person it's kind of like this like energy whiz that you get or this surge of like creation and you want to just make and build and win and you and it's very like whoa 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 it can it could be lower energy than that and still be high agency but he identified low agency as life happening to you and those people that just go oh well I'll just see how it goes or I'll just go with the flow but like not in a go with the flow as in like a positive way as in like oh well I can't be bothered to give myself a go or try things in life when has low agency kind of come up in in your personality maybe or like have you ever identified it in you that you've been like I need to snap out of this yeah 100% yeah and I think I've told you about this off off the podcast as well but I when you surround yourself with low agency friends you become low agency Mm. it's like if you surround yourself with someone that's always half the cup the cup is always half empty you become half empty all the time and you need to surround yourself with people that are high agency the glass is full Otherwise, you're always going to be negative because you're surrounded by negativity. I um, was was surrounded by friends who were just quite negative or was low agency. Low agency, yeah. Low agency, and I was low agency, and I, I was that friend that I would cancel plans. I would be like, oh, I can't, I don't want to leave the house. But my anxiety played into it, and I actually found that surrounding myself by those friends, my anxiety was a million times worse mm. because I ended up not wanting to leave the house because yeah. of it, because I knew that every time we went out, it was going to be possibly a negative experience. Yeah. Whereas if you surround yourself with people that are positive, every time you hang out, even if you have a rubbish time, like us, we, even if it's not a great event or something, we yeah. still have a good time yeah, together. Like we've gone to a few things that have just been like, oh, that was a bit bit of a weird energy we we both mutually felt yeah the weirdness yeah of the event or the place like it's not very often that we've we've had to deal with that like no. we've been very good at like if it's not good for us we'll leave um yeah but we kind of are mutually aware of it and we mm. can check in and i think that's that's the like the sign of a like a friendship that okay you're feeling uncomfortable well okay we're both going to remove ourselves from the situation. Yeah. And it's quite interesting that George Mack spoke about this idea of energy transference and 
what you were saying in that when you surround yourself with those people you become them and you do you really do it energy transference essentially good or bad you're gonna get a release of something from them or spending time with them like you have to realize like what what do i want almost like a wish list that you'd have for a boyfriend or girlfriend like what is the wish list for your friends like how where do you see yourself going with your friends like We've only known each other a year and we've traveled twice together. So like yeah. travel was a big thing. Being like a spontaneous person. Positive. Which I never used to be spontaneous, no. guys. So you can Neither. grow out of like habits or like a, the, the more you give things a go, you can be more relaxed about mm. certain parts of your life. Like I said, my, I let my anxiety completely take over my life. I was the least spontaneous person mm. ever. Um, and I think you just got to step out of your comfort zone. But you can't step out of your comfort zone if you're surrounded by people who don't allow you to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah, or would just prefer to like l- lounge about all day. And like, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because it isn't like you, you can. I have love to a have re- a lounge about. Oh, don't get me wrong. I live in my pajamas. <laughs> if I'm not in gym gear, I'm in my pajamas. Yeah. Um, that's got it's to more be said. Mi- it's more the mindset. It doesn't it's matter the, where it's, it's the pajama mindset. Yeah. It's more like if you, you can chill in your, we can chill in our pajamas on the sofa, but we're talking about like creative things and we're enjoying our time and we're thinking about the future and how can we do this? How can we do that? Or And we can sit down and watch a movie. And then we can carry on later, be like, okay, let's do this, let's yeah, do that. Yeah, it's like the it's, perfect balance of both. And yeah. it's, it's not being afraid to find those people because we could, have, we could have mentally checked out and been like, I don't need any more friends. Yeah. What are you missing out on? Like you're actually missing out on people who could really elevate you and like take you to the next level, cheer for you, be on that same frequency. And I think why would you not? find those people i just found the podcast really interesting he spoke about lots of different elements i think it i think the podcast title was something like 16 like life-changing things or something and high agency friends was one of them and i just thought you know what that is such an important topic because when you decide you want to be a certain person or you're you're branding yourself or you're becoming like you're identifying and creating your identity as someone that maybe you're like not used to being you're going to want to find and attract those friends that align with you on that new journey like you you might be rebranding yourself and it's like not to cut your friends away but like your old friends might not support the new version of you I often find that the people that you've known the longest are the worst supporters um I I could agree with that I remember in I tried to do YouTube when when I was in sixth form and all I wanted to do was just film makeup videos clothes video like clothes hauls and everything try-ons and I bought everything and all I was was just bullied by everyone that Mm. I counted as a friend and they had no belief in me they made me feel rubbish and I ended up to the point where I didn't do it anymore I just stopped Mm. and I why why Mm. did I allow them to stop my path from moving forward because of their negativity why didn't why did I allow myself to be around people that didn't support me yeah. if that's my dream even if you think it's unattainable who cares yeah. you've got to try and support me in the best way so it isn't unattainable anymore yeah and why would you surround yourself with people who don't believe in you yeah exactly because it's gonna it's going to niggle at you it do- yeah it will it, it, it will. does because I mean I stopped doing it and I always think what if I hadn't have stopped it I could have been doing my dream career and I mean I have a, I love my career now but I mean I could have been doing like even more of a dream career that mm-hmm. I love and I stopped it just because I let the people that I was that were closest to me tell me that I wasn't going to amount to anything to do with it mm-hmm. and I often find that it's the strangers who are the most supportive and finding a friend that is so supportive of you is so rare and I think mm-hmm. that's why I really love our friendship oh no I love our friendship as well and I think when you're when you're on that journey and you're you're kind of turning that new leaf at the same time it's kind of like oh we're like <laughs> We're both going through this right now. We're both, yeah. oh, we're both rebranding. So yeah, I think, especially in our industries, it's all about networking, mm-hmm. making a good impression, building the foundation. Like, you know, like, I remember when we when we when we met, it was like, I was like, okay, this girl is like, like on my vibe, like yeah, match, it, exactly. Yeah. And I think I really with people like that. I think when you get the right energy as people and mm. like the same like you know you just the same vibe. It's like people do remember that, and yeah. it's like. I don't know. I've I have clients now that I've met on like nights out. Yeah, like, like we guys, ridiculous. we literally met on a night out. <laughs> yeah. 
at the friends. Genuinely, <laughs> I am always networking. Like I'm like we were really friends. I love thing. that. I love that about you because it's almost like it's not a bad thing. Like yeah. some people see it as like, oh, she switched on with work. But it's like, why would you let that opportunity pass you yeah. by when you're in a room full of opportunities? Oh, 100%. But you just never know. Like I think I see opportunity in everything. And I get like, even now I get my friends involved in like mm. everything I can. Like, oh, I've got a friend for that. Or yeah. I know there's someone for that. It's like yeah. you make these little connections between people you know. And like, you know, with, with like clients now, I'm like, okay, oh, I've got... Oh, I know someone that can do that for you. Like when yeah. you just have this like pool of people that you can, and again, like I go to things now and then it's people are like, oh, how do you know this person? Or like, I know this person. It's like, it's so nice. And mm. you straight away, you get that, you almost get that respect if it's like a client thing or, or a work thing. But yeah, I have no shame in getting LinkedIn out on a night out. Like I, I love absolutely that. no shame. Like it's so funny. Forget <laughs> Insta without LinkedIn. No, I'm not joking. It's so bad. But I think like even now I'm like, I, I look back and I've made connections like years ago with people on LinkedIn mm. and they see like I'll put stuff what I'm do- about what I'm doing now and it's like oh I'm looking for someone mm. to do social media like oh I'm like oh I've got this opportunity this person needs this it's mm. like you just never know mm. and I think it's always just having the mindset of just seeing opportunity in, in everything mm. and I think it's difficult and don't get me wrong I didn't think that before like as I said like with A-levels and like uni I stressed way too much like mm. I think now I'm like Things don't re- things don't stress me out like they did. Like yeah. I used to have quite bad anxiety, like just like most like people do during exam seasons. It's not an easy time. Like I've got my younger sister doing A levels now, and it's like the fact that she we're quite similar. And I always want to just tell her like you're good. Like mm. you can talk to people. Like so life gets skills. better after that. Oh my era god! Of your life. Yeah, it like, really does. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. So what would be your thoughts on someone who maybe like. I feel like with what we do, if you don't shout about your success, no one's going to know about it. Mm. Like, what is your opinion on somebody who is like, I've achieved X, Y, Z? Obviously, it like gets your foot in the door and like someone might see a post of yours and think, oh, I want to work with her because she's doing this or she's achieved this. Yeah. What are your thoughts on people that kind of disregard that and think like, oh, why are they talking about themselves again? Because with social media, there's a fine line between... There's a fine line. Like, oh God, here she goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he goes. (laughs) I Um, know for a fact people are like, oh, she's posting again. Like, she's on holiday again. And I'm just like, (laughs) people will get so sick of it. But I do think that, yeah, in our industry you kind of you have to be like cringe in a way like you have to just post about it and scream about it don't get me wrong like there's things that I don't like I don't like my actual agency itself like I don't have a website I don't I kind of it's all through like world word of mouth but I think when it comes to the whole content creation you need to show that you're good at it and I think that's what I say to my friends that are like you know they're interested in a um they're like oh you know I I love making content um but I just don't know how to start it's like literally just start like I remember when I started I was like no, obviously no one was watching it at all just like every like anyone who starts you've got to start somewhere and I was just doing because I remember I really started doing it when I was doing my ski season and I was just taking videos of everything I was in like I was working at this chalet as a chalet host and I just was like videoing everything for me it was like such a the life that it was the like everything around it was like amazing and I was like Little do people know that I was like scrubbing toilets and like mm. serving the food, but like I I loved just capturing everything. And mm. obviously now I look back on it, I'm so glad that I have all those memories and stuff. But that turned into like such a career move because obviously it was like I just didn't care. Mm. And I think my friends love them absolutely no shade, <laughs> love them to bits. But I remember like when we first we were doing stuff, um, we had opportunities like go to things. And like as as friends, like just through people we know, and then we were taking videos and like taking photos of everything. Mm. And then I was like, "Girls, we should do something with this." Like, yeah. group influencing is like not a thing. Like, we love taking pictures. Like, blah blah blah. And they were just like, "Oh no, like that's kind of embarrassing." And I was just like, "Oh," I was like, "Okay." And then obviously at the time didn't know that it would lead to like what I'm doing now but mm. I just started it and that's why my TikTok I named it the girls here because mm. I was like well it's only me but I can't <laughs> would you it. ever want to work with like other people collaborate because I feel like with, yeah. with your line of work you you seem like a very collaborative person like, yeah like I love I do love it um 
But yeah, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to, yeah, just in terms of like how people could work with you. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you do? Like ex- kind of explain in more detail, like how you find your creators and yeah. how you work with them. Like what characteristics do they have? Like mm-hmm. what's a person to you that you're like, I want to work with you? Yeah. Who, who is that person? Yeah, well, this is the thing. And I... I struggle with that answer like now and I ask mm. myself that when I'm like when I want to like expand and and a lot of the time like I'll get my friends involved and all that sort of thing but just someone that is like super just creative and just doesn't care like I think as well what I find with the events that I go to and the things that I go to you do have to be extremely sociable mm-hmm. extremely like you know put yourself out there like can I take a video of you or like do you mind if I do this? And like, mm. oh my God, at the time, I remember like when I was working at Yacht Week and I was just like, oh my God, this is just me on my own. Like yeah. going up to these people that probably like, oh God, not the social media girl again. <laughs> like, and I didn't, whereas I love doing it with people because yeah. it's so much more like, and it's so nice, isn't it? When you find someone that like doesn't mind it, yeah. Which is why whenever I see a camera, like someone's doing social stuff, I'm like, I'll help, yeah. Or like I'll do something, I'll talk because it's like, yeah. Why wouldn't you help them? Like, if if you're someone who's keen to do it, like it's a win-win for both of you. I know it's honestly the most humbling thing when you're like (laughs) on the street and like you're trying to take content. Go away, (laughs) yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, yeah, okay, I will. (laughs) Like it's fine, but I don't know. I think I don't know. To be really honest about it, I would love someone that has just the same like hunger for it as well Mm -hmm. I mean at the end of the day like I started doing it out of pure fun of just like being creative and like doing that um but I I don't know like I feel like if if I find like a mini me then I'm like they're obviously just gonna want to like work for themselves too do you know what I mean yeah (laughs) so like I can't find I need someone that can like you know they want to learn they're like really keen to learn because I look at stuff that I've made like like a year ago and I'm like god like that is not that's not great like you mm. the more you do it the better you get at it and I think it's being in the right places as well um and mm. I think like even with my sister I'm like I get her involved with stuff I'm like oh you should come to this event with me and like you know if you want to get into content like obviously she can absolutely forge her own path but I'd love her to work yeah. with me one day <laughs> but like I'm like always just like such a cool way to meet people whether you're interested in the content or not but I don't know what advice would you give to someone who maybe wants to network more and has that like that drive to do it but they don't really know like where to go or who to meet like what what things could they do to kind of get themselves out there I mean you mentioned LinkedIn on a night out I feel like that's a good bit of (laughs) advice it's a good one and yeah I strongly recommend that one but I think you'd be surprised I think when I the amount of people that I've spoken to that are in similar industries that want to help Mm. it's like you know and I think you'd be the same and I'm the same where like you know I see someone that's I get messages like or just people I know being like how did you do like how are you doing that and I'm Mm. like I just want to help you know and I think that's that in that sense I think people you'd be surprised how willing people are to just like help you out or like even like mentor you and that's mm. not to say I'm in a position to like mentor people but like I have mentors now mm. that I'm just like I'm like oh it's really nice yeah. like like thank goodness for them yeah and I yeah. think that's why like I remember I'd I'd messaged someone who then got me in contact like referred me I'd never I'd never met her mm. um in person but I messaged her on link on not LinkedIn <laughs> I love LinkedIn <laughs> no on Instagram um, and I was like, I really love what you're doing. Mm. Like, um, I love following your journey. Like, your content's amazing and all that sort of thing. Not asking for anything at all. It was genuinely because I liked watching it and mm. I felt like I was learning. It was really inspiring to just watch what she was doing. Anyway, um, she was like, oh, like, thank you so much. Fine. No response. I, no, it's in like, it was like, that was just, yeah. it was just like, a, like, it's not a carry on conversation. Where it was like, I didn't want anything out of it. I was just like, I love just your to stuff. let you know. Yeah. yeah. And then she was like, oh, thank you so much. So sweet about it. And then a couple months down the line, I then get like an email from this brand who's now like a client now. They were like, oh, we're looking for, you know, social media, like management and like content creation. Um, and then when I had the interview and stuff, when I had the, the did the proposal for them and everything, they're like, oh, so-and-so referred you. And I was like, oh my God, that's so weird. I've never met her, but yeah. I literally, that's so nice that's of so her. so lovely. Yeah. yeah, like you'd be surprised. I think with, with, with your answering your question is like, 
just put yourself out there. Mm. Like you absolutely have nothing to lose. Like absolutely nothing to lose. So, like go over. It's the same as like with like dating. Yeah. Like you actually have nothing to lose. So true. Like who cares? Like if they never speak to you again, fine. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so fine. But like sometimes you, just... you have to risk the rejection. Yeah. Or like risk it not going anywhere. Yeah. Anything. And do you do you think people generally now still live a very stressful life because? I feel like we all went down that hole. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow live. Yeah. I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna do this, that, the other. Since then, mm. you know, it's been a couple of years now. Do you think people are back on the grind? Are you still writing articles about burnout and people living a very stressful life? Do, are you seeing that still? Yeah, definitely. I think we had that period where everyone was forced to slow down and you know everyone had like a daily walk that they went for and they had this like meditation routine or um they would sit down and read for 10 minutes every morning because our lives changed so drastically and now we're kind of coming back to our new form of normal i mean i still don't think that the kind of world that we live in today and and particularly the working world is anywhere you can't compare it to what it was before COVID because it is so different Mm. and so many of us are still working from home but are carrying a lot of stress um still that we just kind of have left over from that period as well it was a really stressful time for a lot of people and I don't think we've really like delved into how that's going to affect us long term um so interesting and yeah even now when I you know yeah there's a lot of stress it's still going around a lot of burnout maybe even more so because people are trying to find that balance between you know our new normal working from home Mm. still having a social life still having connection and community but we're just juggling a lot Mm. we really are and do you think the whole work from home thing is beneficial or do you think that isolation brings on a new Mm. a new experience of stress and pressure and it's almost like not having people to interact with and just have those daily moments where you might have a small conversation or things like that. Do you think having work from home policies is is affecting people in a different way? I think it really depends on the person. I think some people thrive from working from home um, and some people really struggle. And I think Mm -hmm. it also depends on your personal situations. Like, you know, some people who thrive from working from home really enjoy having that time that they would be commuting to do a workout, go for a walk, um, meet up for coffee with friends. But then you will have other people who maybe live alone and are a bit more isolated. And I think we know how important like human connection is for our well-being. Like it's so well documented and we need to have those connections with people. And as you say, it could be something so simple, like in the canteen at work, like just a little chat with someone about how's your day going mm. or, or when you make that first coffee when you go yeah, into an office. I actually personally really miss offices. Yeah. But I I, I do struggle now because <laughs> I'm fully work from home. Like yeah. since I um went freelance earlier this year and work for myself, I'm always at home. But I do make an effort to connect with other freelancers and yeah. like meet up for co-working days because I do, do think it's so important. Um, and it's just finding now a way that you can continue the well-being routine you might have developed during that time where we were constantly working from home and find a way for it to fit into your life now that you're in this like hybrid world. Definitely. And do you think those mindfulness practices and meditation getting yourself on a walk are achievable and attainable today or do you think it's just another thing to add to the to-do list of life yeah that's what I never want anyone to feel like it's something um to add to their to-do list and I think the way I approach it is find a way that works for you find a way that it fits into your life that's sustainable that's realistic that it's something that you're going to be able to do every day um, and I actually had a client recently who finished up a like a six-week course with me and her her biggest takeaway was that it was before she saw meditation as a chore it was something she had to sit down and do every morning she had to make time for and now that she's just shifted that perspective and she sees it as I'm gonna scatter mindfulness techniques throughout my day I'm gonna do a breath work on the tube I'm gonna do a little meditation before like a big meeting um and she now feels like she's opting into the practice rather than feeling like it's something that's on her to-do list and I think you just have to approach it from a way that works for you what works for me won't work for you what works for you won't work for me Mm. and so it's finding techniques that are gonna work for your lifestyle Mm. so do you think that businesses or sort of more corporate spaces who are trying to integrate something Mm. can they can they do that successfully if it's so individual and 
it's not a one size fits all situation how how could an industry or a business tackle that I think having the option for people Mm. is really important I mean if a business is able to put on like breathwork sessions on a Monday and it's something that they can offer employees they can bring someone in who's going to teach them these breathwork techniques and they're almost equipping their employees with the skills to be able to manage stress to be able to live a little bit more mindfully and then they can take those techniques and fit them into their lifestyle Mm. just kind of as and when they need them or maybe they want to develop a regular mindfulness practice so maybe they will come every Monday to the session and then continue on Tuesday morning Wednesday morning and do the same thing at home so yeah I think it's it's given people the resources and the option to to take on those practices. Mm. So what's your favorite way to sort of switch off if you were if you were someone that was quite new to it Mm. what would you say is like your go-to like your bread and butter of just mindfulness? (laughs) (laughs) So I I mean I have like a super elaborate nighttime routine it's just like. I love that tell me more. (laughs) It's just something that for me, that's like my switch at the end of the day. I switch off from work. I I feel like when you're self-employed, you work a lot Mm. and you need to have like a hard stop. And for me, it's when after dinner, when I start my nighttime routine. Um, But one technique I'll always do in the evening, even if it's just once I get into bed, like for five minutes, is a body scan meditation. And I think that is such a great starting point for a lot of people add a little bit of breath work into the start of it, take some deep breaths and then just mentally scan each part of the body and just see if you can notice any tension or any sensations and just see if you can let it, the body relax. And it's just a way to almost like cleanse the body and the mind of the day and help you switch off and, and get ready for bed. Do you practice gratitude? Is there anything that you do? Like, do you do it like a gratitude journal? I know a lot of like five minute journals are very mm-hmm. popular. I've kind of started doing like 10 gratitudes in the morning just to That's kind amazing. of shift my perspective, be less negative. Mm-hmm. I try not to be negative, but in a, in a world that's, you know, full of bad news yeah. <laughs> often um it's good to kind of start your day on like a positive note do you ever find yourself writing things down are you as a journalist yeah <laughs> do you write things down funnily enough I actually don't write it down I just like take a mental note mm-hmm. like I'll do normally in the evening I'll do three things I'm grateful for and sometimes I'll turn to my boyfriend and say tell me three things you're grateful <laughs> for and it's like something we'll do together and he does entertain um entertain that but yeah I I kind of take a mental note but I think it's a really powerful practice and there's like a lot of research that shows it can really help shift that mindset help you feel a little bit more positive boost positive emotions um so I think it's a great thing to do I'm just terrible at sticking to those journals <laughs> yeah you know? it's really yes. bad I like a journal that's like not dated yeah so like I, I never can work with a diary because mm-hmm. I just miss it for weeks. Yeah. If it's something that I could just pick up when I need it, I'm much more productive. Oh, so with much it. better. Because even then, if you <laughs> kind of go away on holiday and you're yes. like, oh gosh, I didn't take it with me, and that's five days I've missed. And yeah. So yeah, an undated gratitude journal would be great. Yes. I think that I was really lucky because I didn't go into this business thinking as a job I want a business Mm. I went into this like just by mistake so everything I was doing was like for the first time there was no pressure on like this is the business however I did say to my sister because I was like if this idea doesn't work Mm. I actually don't know what I'm gonna do because I had been trying so many different things that like nothing was really working Mm. and I just was like if this doesn't work I I'm I'm really struggling to think of like how I can make my art for everybody and like make do something creative and work for myself that was the pressure for me rather than like I want a business so I don't I think I was lucky that I had like the innocence and like just also like because it was during COVID there was actually no pressure it was just like I was lucky like I do feel very lucky to be doing it at that time it's like if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't like obviously I want it to work but it wasn't like how do I do this I just sort of was like right I guess I need to make a website I'll make the website and figure even now like every step even now I'm like learning about VAT it's like I don't know about VAT (laughs) oh gosh me too (laughs) but like you figure it out when the time comes like if I don't every step like slowly rather than like thinking about the big picture I think that would be my best advice definitely and did you find the idea of like you said when you mentioned 
lockdown was a very creative time and the pressure was off. Mm. Do you think that a lot of things were birthed out of that because we were in that sort of hobby mindset versus I have to make this a business? Mm. How did you how did you know that you did need to take it like super seriously? And was it the success first or was it the passion for what you were doing? Because I feel like when people were doing a lot of people were starting mm. things or trying things in lockdown, I tried a few little things and I, I saw lots of friends try try different projects and yeah. candle businesses just came out of nowhere. Yeah, true. That's very true. Actually. Uh, but uh, lots of them didn't survive like past lockdown Mm. what do you think think, yeah was that I it was doing really well and I was like I had been not really earning I was like working in a gym as like front of house like Mm. just before we went into lockdown and also even when you do a modeling job like yes it's a lot of money like all in one go but that if you're not working for like another week or another two weeks you don't have like you literally have to wait three months for your payment to come in Mm. so then I started seeing all this money and I was like oh my god like like I hadn't been able to even like move around my own money Mm. like in the same way before so it gave me that freedom of like oh my god like I can actually like do things without having to wait for somebody else to like pay me and yeah and then I I was just it was doing like well and I thought that it had a lot more potential so I think that's what made me be like okay like let's take this seriously Mm. and as you were like a niche business how did you measure aside from like sales picking up and things how did you measure your success like what were you looking at were you growing on social media Mm. like with someone starting out what can they look at within their business that can determine their success I definitely think like growth in sales okay um because Instagram followers mean nothing if no one's buying anything, mm. um, unless you want to be an influencer and sell for other people. But that's very true. <laughs> yeah, um, which then it does. But even then, if your if your followers aren't buying from you, then you're still not getting going to get brand deals because no one's going to be purchasing them. So it doesn't actually matter about the followers. It's about who's following you. I would say. Mm. Also, when I started noticing like different celebrities liking it, that was really really exciting. Mm. Um, Can you name some? <laughs> Who who's been your like OMG? I've almost, had almost like shocking. Like yeah, for engagement. the first ever shocking thing was when uh, Kyle from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Iconic. bought a print for Vanessa Bryant mm. for the anniversary of Kobe Bryant dying, mm. which was like, what the hell that Vanessa Bryant's going to have a picture of Kobe Bryant that I made for her in their house. And she posted it on Instagram, which was amazing. She didn't tag me, but she got I it. actually remember seeing that. Do you? I do, I do. Yeah, I that was cool. That. So but I follow she... Kyle Richards on Aww. Instagram. I love Real Housewives, guys. Big Real Housewives <laughs> fan. Me too. <laughs> so yeah, that was really cool. But they bought it as a gift. So mm. like, I get why they didn't tag me. It was fine. But it was more just like great to see it on Instagram and oh yeah most recently was Sophia Ritchie Mm. when I saw Sophia Ritchie repost my story I was like oh my god like this is iconic yeah it was really cool very cool yeah so that was great um who else has there been anyone on your radar that you think oh they would be they would be the ideal client yeah I mean Molly May is my dream oh my gosh people like Maura bought for Molly May a brand bought twice for Molly May yet oh I saw it in the background of a picture of Tommy and I was like just post Oh my god! <laughs> so frustrating, yes. and I'm like, maybe she actually has an audience that are hyper yeah. engaged. Yeah, Molly Mae's the dream. She is the dream, and I th- I think a lot of people overlook her in a way that like sh- she's very like on on a level of relatability. Mm. Even though her lifestyle isn't as much now, but she's definitely a creator that a lot of people want to access and tap mm. into. And mm. I, it's interesting that you sort of suggest her as a, as your top person. Oh, I would love. I think she is my like dream client. Like her everything and her her audience is perfect. Her mm. engagement's amazing. Yeah, I think she she'd be an amazing person too. Mm. So if you with. were a, a brand or business that was wanting to identify that like dream collab or kind of navigate the influencer marketing sort of strategy what would you say like the main criteria like you said following isn't like a big Mm. deal Um, breaker I guess it depends what your product is Mm. but you basically want to use an influencer who would have your product Mm. um, 
that's the first thing. You also have to, like, I've gifted to so many people and it's done nothing. Mm. And that doesn't mean the product's bad. It just means that you need somebody else. And it's very difficult to tell, like, who is good and who is not. I'm going to ask you a very direct question. Okay. Where can my high achieving women out there find their dream person? Yes. I wrote a list for this one. Thank you for the list. Because I was like, I was thinking about all the places and all the things that you could do. And I was like, there was too many. So I was Mm. like, actually, that's really positive. And I hope people take that away. Being like, all of these might not be for you, but like, maybe you can do one of them. So my number one, and I wrote this at the top because it's my number one. And I think it works really well. And it's worked well for people I know is go to your friends work drinks so they're not your what? colleagues. That is genius. Yeah, genius. So there's no like. <laughs> so it's not weird. Conflict like, of interest. Exactly. Shit, where you eat. I don't know if we're allowed to swear. On no, this. we can. We can <laughs> swear away. I've got a lovely analogy in my head now. Nice visual. Yeah, but I've yeah, heard that analogy before. It's it's, it's it's exactly. Everyone will tell you not to date your colleagues, right? Yes. Which is actually really interesting because it's um, those relationships are twenty five percent more likely to work than normal relationships oh so actually gosh. i would also say your own office i'm quite an advocate advocate for that i work in my childhood bedroom so. um <laughs> yeah it's not this is why i come to we work sort of spaces but yeah exactly but this is another thing and not to go on a tangent but i do think it's really hard for people who work from home these days 100%. getting yourself out to, to other people's other work, people's drinks. work <laughs> drinks that is genius if you're somebody who is self-employed or a startup yeah, or but most of your friends will have office jobs probably 100%. and go for drinks on a Thursday with nice attractive high value men and they'll be in suits <laughs> yeah or like smart they're outfits. like normally willing to meet new people because they've spoken to their colleagues all day like they're not that bothered <laughs> but yeah, a new person coming along that's you know high energy is there for the right reasons yeah my cogs are turning you've you've lit something up in me yeah it's like a Eureka! I've I've not tr- <laughs> I've even not done that. Like why haven't and I? It's done really that? simple, but yeah, I do it all the time. Um, because also you just never know who you're going to meet. Like generally, yeah. it's a great networking space. But um, I do think for dating, it's a really good one. I went to one recently and I saw this most attractive man, and I was like, absolutely, yeah. got his Instagram. That's Easy. lovely. Job and done. you know what? As well, you're kind of in that mindset of like that you've just come out of the hustle and you've just come out of work and it's like a release and a de-stress but actually it's quite an accessible um like topic of conversation mm. you can talk about how you who you work like what yeah. like how you work with that person your friend the mutual the mutual exactly. friend aspect. and you've got someone there that you're comfortable with that you can always retreat yeah. back to they can always introduce you to more people as well Go around the office, hon. Why not? Yeah, you're not. (laughs) Exactly. Make it work for yourself. But they can't (laughs) awkwardly teams you the next day because you're not part of the company. So it's just perfect. It's genius. I love that. I mean, that is definitely a number one. Yeah, it's number one for me, like um, a million percent. Um, The next one for me is going to kind of exclusive members, events, clubs. I think that's a really good one if you mm-hmm. can get an invite. That's why I was like, it's not for everyone because, you know, you might not be able to get an invite. Yeah, look, but, everyone oh, has Soho sorry. House memberships these days. Just befriend yeah. enough people that you're on rotation. I've got one, so come along. There you go. <laughs> and what, I know people that are in the Ned as well. Yeah, the Ned. That it's I a, quite like. And they have, um, if you're straight, a woman, they have a much higher percentage of men at that one. So Do they? Yeah. Okay, so for all my... A lot of finance bros, but depends yeah. what you're into. I mean, you can navigate yeah. that. <laughs> you can have a few days. A lot of mask energy around, yeah. but I'm not I'm not complaining. Neither am I. Continue. <laughs> I don't want to distract you from this list. It's great. <laughs> Were you going to ask about the Soho House? <laughs> I was going to say, is it a good place to meet people? Like, what have you found from the experience? Because I've done a couple of the different venues. Yeah. Um, but sort of in terms of finding people or, or kind of networking in that in that way, do you think it's a good place? Have you noticed it be a I, positive experience? I find like when I go to work there, no. Like no. people don't I wanna, feel like people don't people work don't, there. They do, they do. It's actually very popular. I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I wanted to be a member well, maybe I, so I, I can use it as like one, my version of WeWork. <laughs> the one at White City. I tried to have a meeting oh, yeah. there with someone that I knew and 
it, like we needed to do a call and you can only oh, do phone calls call. in the stairs yeah and it was like oh my gosh no and stressful. that's why it's not very good for social when i do work there it's normally when i'm like editing yeah so i've got headphones on headphones and on. everyone's kind of doing the same like no one's taking mm. calls you're not allowed so yeah it's quite like solo but when i go to the actual like organized events right. they're really good for meeting people nice um and they do do some dating specific ones like not they. not singles but that's what i'm hoping to organize so if anyone's a so house member yes coming if, soon if anyone <laughs> that is a really good idea and you can come as my guest <laughs> okay yeah see really... look she's looking out for her fellow yeah. podcast community the um the events team are really keen to do that because there's really a lot of cool. single people at yeah. these like in these members clubs and, and the creatives as well people exactly that are kind of like not minded. doing the same thing but are like-minded and and have yeah you know are pursuing something mm-hmm. and have that career drive that's yeah, really exactly. cool so i think that's a good one you've got some um, really good ones i didn't i didn't I uh, ever <laughs> think that there wouldn't be good, good but yeah, I'm like, like I'm inspired I'm no, like I haven't done these no things. I generally like them that's why I was like I need to keep like a list because I, I was like it. I need to remind myself when I'm like feeling a bit low or the yeah. dating like what I can do yeah what you can do um, another one I've not done but like I do know it's very popular is alumni events um, okay from like either your uni or I don't know what else it'd be like a work yeah a work alumni maybe yeah we could revisit your work <laughs> old old job but um yeah, that stems from, I think, which we probably might go into a bit later, but the the whole um, dating economics yes. thing about how there's a lot more women graduating university than there is men. And I think one of the, the author, um, John, of that book suggests a lot about revisiting people that you already know right. or people from your past that maybe you dismissed when you were 21 because you just you know didn't think that they were yeah <laughs> sorry my cogs are turning now yep. yeah yeah what was the name of the book sorry um datanomics is his first one okay. then his second one is make your move okay which is kind of like a solution <laughs> why is that giving me the harry potter song <laughs> when i make my move <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> this podcast is so run, run off Weasley. the rails so quickly. Um, that's um, cool. But yeah, so the, that's the solutions book to the dating dilemma, right. which is really good. I read. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was good that he brought that out um, as a second one to be like, okay, we know that the odds are shit, so what can we do? Yeah, and a big one for him is like going back and thinking okay is there anyone in my life that I already know or someone maybe from my past that I dismissed Mm -hmm. that I could like revisit and I think that's maybe where the alumni events could come into play Mm -hmm. like maybe there's someone from your course you didn't even like think about Mm -hmm. didn't even know (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and then you see them and you're like actually actually you're actually, you've developed <laughs> yeah but I feel like you do you grow and you change and sometimes those meet cutes happen because you've already you already know each other yeah and I think when you're like 20 21 at uni you're not thinking about really the important characteristics of a partner no. I definitely wasn't no. I was thinking it's kind of like are you attractive based. yes yeah. or no like that's it see <laughs> then they're done that and got the yeah. t-shirt obviously they could have been attractive back then like yeah. you just missed it or they could have had a glow up or yeah just general i think you just miss people mm. um but you've got common ground you've got something to talk about that he's very big on that like he thinks shared experiences are like the most important thing for a romantic relationship he's very anti dating app as well okay so i'm kind of glad you said that because i have said cuz I've, I've been single a long time very long time, eight years. Mm. And in that time, I've done a bit of dating apps, tried it, not really been for me. And it took me until sort of two years ago that I was like, I know for a fact the person I'm going to meet is not for an app. So it was like giving myself permission to like not need to be on it. like yeah. Because I do think when you are someone that's busy working or you've got other things on, to have to facilitate an app or many apps at the same time. Oh, it's such a time suck. Yeah. It's, a time, it's like a, an energy leak mm. in a way because it could be time that instead of being sat at home yeah. scrolling, you could be out in the real world talking yeah. to people and, and finding those people in real life. Mm-hmm. What what do you contribute to the dating app thing? Do you think there's good apps, bad apps? Yeah. Should people be on them? Things like Raya. I've done Raya. Yeah, I've not admittedly. tried that one. Uh, I just thought it was just money coming out every month. I didn't yeah. match with people who I've heard it's very mixed. showy. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll am i be honest, I match with celebrities. Yeah. But the conversation is bland <laughs> yeah. for the most part because they've got a pick of the bunch. Do you know yeah. what I mean? 
and I've had some nice guys on there like like professional Michelin star chefs mm. and people in Formula One not yeah. Formula One drivers tried that Just did try Lando Loris but engineers. didn't get any but like race engineers yeah. people like that great but they're busy they're so very, ve- they are so, so it's busy. like how do we make this that. work they are not free they're people. not free people <laughs> so <laughs> you know finding those people on those apps is another story like what what would you say is like are there any that people should avoid would you be Ooh. would you say oh i wouldn't waste my time on that app? i mean i don't love them mm. i i have a lot of fun on them so i enjoy them from a personal perspective because when i go on them i don't really treat them as if i'm finding my soulmate right. i am quite blunt on them i'm very funny i'm very witty yeah and i just treat them like a game i i like almost try and and come up with the funniest thing i can think of to get a response right and that doesn't actually mean that i always want to chat to someone sometimes i'm just like can i get this person to reply like yeah i generally treat them like that um and my whole profile is very jokey it's it's not very serious it's not like i mean i still look quite cute but they're like you know i love that i still look cute but they're silly it's like Like, a different part of your personality all the prompts are like very silly um and like all the ones that are you know like for example i go like this is my best side and it's just a picture of my bum like (laughs) (laughs) i love that though but i feel like there's a time and a place you can totally enjoy it and like experiment with the app and see what kind of works for you is there something that you have learnt from being on apps like lesson mm. wise or what things to put on your profile because i feel like oh yeah oh, people can link God, their instagram we could do a whole episode on that I mean, like there's just so much oh there's to so it. much do you link <laughs> do you link your business life on there or do you keep it just very i don't personal? link my instagram anymore i okay. used to and since the podcast things i don't because again i don't want people to be put off by like too much information yeah so i think it's useful to keep that back mm. um because the apps used to have your full name on there. I don't know if you remember that. I remember that, that yeah. Whereas they don't now. It just did. says, like, Katie. So they're, yeah. they're never going to be able to find my Instagram. Yeah. Because even um, if you didn't match with a person, they could still yeah, they see could, your full name. That's and you'd get crazy. people in your DMs, wouldn't yeah, you? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then people would just put the handles eventually Whoop. with being, yep. like, want the followers. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. But, yeah, I don't have my Instagram linked. But I think that's a personal thing. Mm. Um, But I think in terms of, like what to put my biggest thing is like varied photos okay i have reviewed like loads of friends where they've just got a really nice picture of them with a drink like normally an alcoholic drink Mm -hmm. and that's the whole profile like six pictures of just them with a drink and i'm like that's not doing anything that conveys one type of you but it's not exactly your hobbies or your it's like one faced and also like i said to them okay if you were someone trying to match with you what would you say like what would you reply to and they're like so true oh, you're right nothing like there's you no need conversation, a conversation starter, starter. yeah yeah and if it's all just like what do you like to do on sunday brunches again like they're just gonna like that as a as a, a like, maximum reaction yeah, yeah they're yeah. gonna like a photo so true and then you can't actually start the thing whereas if you have something really stupid on there and like funny yeah it's way more likely gonna get people to actually like write something and engage which is where i start to play the game because i find it definitely fun and when you are someone that is in that initial startup phase you've got lots of hats on you're, you know, yeah. ma- the marketer, you're emailing, you're speaking to manufacturers, you're creative directing, you're thinking about, you know, social media and how you're going to market yourself on there. So, like, how how have you been able to kind of delegate those tasks and prioritise certain things? Has that been an easy thing to do or has have you had moments where you've gone, oh, my gosh, there's so much to do <laughs> and so little time? I still have those moments. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do, to be honest. I don't know what's going on. Um yeah there's obviously there's a lot there's a lot to cover right and Mm. every kind of every area requires different skills and different attitudes and different roles that kind of I guess you need that you need to apply Mm. so in terms of like putting on those like many different hats like how do you prioritize or how do you structure your day is there something that you you like schedule in do you make sure you're kind of dipping into each thing equally or because obviously when you were going through that manufacturing process that probably ate into a lot of 
the other elements of your business time yeah and obviously you were doing you were working alongside yeah building the brand how how have you like managed to do it all because I feel like a lot of people are creating businesses on the side of having an existing job or a career that's full-time how can you balance all of it yeah it's such a good question and I think consistency is so important like how many hours realistically can I commit a day mm. that's realistic that is realistic <laughs> yeah because um, you might get home and be absolutely exhausted from your day job yeah, and you think exactly. gosh I really need a day off here and sometimes it's okay to be all exhausted mm. and the kindest thing to do is still open your laptop and get on with it and sometimes you need an early night like you know it changes depending on on your week I guess and Mm. and what you have going on in your life because everyone's different and Mm. everyone can commit different different times and and that kind of thing I just I guess I I typically commit a specific hour amount of time a day Mm -hmm. and work off a to-do list I mean, we love a a to-do list on this podcast. (laughs) A lot of my guests are like, we need a to-do list. We need to check things off. We need to feel like we're being productive, but also not like overdoing it. Because I feel like sometimes you can put so many tasks up and you're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And actually it's like, whoa, you've given yourself so many things to do. Yeah. You've just done your nine to five. Now you're doing your five to nine. Because a lot of people do do that. And they're kind of in their second, their second hustle. How can you... How can you prioritise those important tasks? So you definitely say to-do list is major for you. Oh, God. Yes. It's just... It's the, <laughs> I don't think I could live without them. I think I just forget what was going on, honestly. Yeah. Everything goes on my to-do list and I just work my way down. Mm. And it's just the classic of doing the urgent stuff first. I mean, it's it's such a classic method, isn't it? But it's there for a reason and it works. I mean, doing your quick tasks, doing your urgent ones mm. and then going, right, I've done that, what's next? So you're not stressed about anything that needs done tomorrow. You can get ahead of yourself and become organised and make sure that you're ahead of things rather than going, oh crap, like I've got that tomorrow, I haven't done that. I guess it allows you to stay on top of things, doesn't it? Definitely. And with your sort of transitioning from sort of working full time that that sort of hustle how have you integrated a more like long-term schedule because obviously as the business grows the launch happens you're kind of releasing this collection in time for winter yeah how is that going to change the pace of your business because you are a seasonal business so do you take those slower periods to work on design or do like what do you do in those interims and those points where business isn't super crazy yeah, it's so true, right? And I'm quite fortunate in the sense it gives it gives me a chance to take a step back and look at what we need to do for next season. Okay, let's look what worked, mm-hmm. what didn't work, um, what worked really well, what could we have done better? So in the summer months, I mean, it's it's that vital time of, you know, finding the right retailers for next year, who works for us, who doesn't. Um, and I guess coming up with even more of an effective strategy for the next. I think it's so easy when you're working on something all the time to kind of become blind to what's going on and not be able to see things with fresh eyes. Mm. So it's really helpful to take that step back and then kind of have a recess for the following yes that you know exactly what you're doing because you only have those few months. I mean, our peak season is obviously seasonal with us being ski wear. So being able to go into it with a full plan um, backed by data and backed by our previous work knowing knowing what's going to work for us I guess Mm. and how do you because obviously you could develop something you could develop something now and it'd be you know perfect on brand trendy and then in a whole year's time things completely change Um, I feel like you're you're obviously building a business that is not just trend driven it's it's about establishing you know functionality which is I think really important for you and it's the reason why it's going to be so successful but how do you kind of deal with the pressure of trends because I feel like there'll be moments where certain color schemes or patterns or colorways are the thing and the moment how do you kind of step back and say do you know what that's great but it's not us How, how do you how do you stop yourself from getting consumed in it it's so true and that was kind of one of my initial thought processes was, you know, so many brands focus on colours, what's coming up, what's trending. 
and use that as a basis for their for their collection. But our ethos, and we're working with a colour specialist for our next collection, so it's more based of the value of what's going to make people feel good, what they're going to feel confident in. Mm. So using the tones that complement all different skin tones best and making people feel good. So we kind of we go off the basis of it being a sophisticated, timeless style rather than trend-based fashion, which mm -hmm. means that when you invest in Sloop, you can bring it out every year and you don't need to worry about it being last season or, oh God, I don't like this colour anymore because no one's wearing it. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It's kind of that sophisticated, timeless style that you know that you're going to feel good in and look good. Mm. I think that's very true because I think particularly with ski wear, it's not something you're wearing unless you're living in like the US or you're skiing in Austria you're yeah. not wearing it every day and I feel like it's very different in the UK because I mean it depends where your your target um, customers are but for UK based people it's not like we've got slopes around the corner <laughs> so people are going abroad they're making it you know a, a whole travel experience or it's a trip or maybe they might have one or two ski trips in a year but they might be thinking oh I want pieces that I can rotate and enjoy and not feel like oh I've already worn that I've already you know yeah exactly worn that piece yeah. and I'm kind of over it because I yeah. feel like there's so much with with everything there's so much demand to have the next thing and the updated thing but ski wear is kind of timeless in a way it's got a long lifespan I know with my ski jackets and my ski wear some of the pieces I've had for ten years. So it's like stuff you bring out yeah. every year. Uh -huh. um, so how have you how have you thought about that for the brand and, you know, what you want to create? Is there anything that you're like, I we must integrate that into our collection? In terms of design? Design or style or just colour palettes. What are you thinking is going to be like true to the brand? It's It's genuinely, I mean, when the collection we have at the moment, I literally drew, <laughs> I literally sketched it and... It was just what stood out to me as being, feeling sexy and cosy in all at the same time whilst mm. having the shape where that makes you feel good, you know what I mean? And um, feeling secure when you're on the slopes. For me, and I think like, I think like everyone would agree, it's just about creating that feeling while still looking good and it... I guess it all it all comes back to that. I don't want to repeat myself, mm. but it just it genuinely is just kind of that that value of being able to feel good on the slopes. Mm. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I can't wait to see what 2024 brings and I can't wait to bring you new episodes like this in the new year. Stay sweet.